Good morning, and welcome back to this week's webisode uh, with Fishwick and Associates. Today is Friday, and today we're going to talk about experts and how our firm goes about getting experts in a med mal or better wise known as medical malpractice. With that being said, John, do you want to go ahead and talk to us about that? I will, Zach. Zach, our host with the most, leading us off. I see Judge Daniel out there. Judge Daniel uh, clerked for a state judge up in Stanton area before he came with us, and there were some significant verdicts up there for medical malpractice cases. Uh, probably just coincidence that Daniel at least was uh, working in the background of those cases, but was good experience for him. So uh, we work with a lot of experts in a lot of different cases, but in medical malpractice cases where you're saying that the healthcare provider was negligent, and usually the, the injuries in those cases are very, very significant. And so we always try to work with Zach, with experts who are, have worked for both the plaintiff side and the mm -hmm. defense side. We're looking to get to the truth to find out what really happened. And we want to make sure that we have experts that are uh, equally could serve on either side that are going to be respected by the court and by a jury in a case that they know that what they're telling them hopefully is the truth and is helping them find answers. But in medical malpractice cases where you're, you're saying that what a healthcare provider did, you know, violated the standard of care, you're heavily dependent on an expert. And so we, we do a lot of vetting of our experts to make sure that we get the right expert that's gonna be respected by the court and respected by juries. And there are also some really technical requirements in this case, in these cases. And Daniel, let's talk a little bit about, before you can even file a medical malpractice case, you have to have a certification from an expert. And that's a mouthful, of certification from an expert. That, that means you're getting you know, a doctor or whatever that healthcare provider, it could be a nurse or, some other healthcare provider that's in that industry or in that field who says that what this person did violated the standard of care. Tell our viewers a little bit about that. Right. So as you mentioned that before you actually before you uh, serve the lawsuit, you actually can file it without getting a certification. Although we like to have you know to talk to a medical um, expert you know before we file any case because it's helpful to have that opinion. But the Virginia law requires before you serve the lawsuit for medical malpractice that you have to get a certification from an expert saying that, you know, that they reviewed the records and what this healthcare provider did violated the standard of care and uh, caused the injury in question. And so you have to get that certification and you have to you know, file that when you serve the lawsuit. Right. And that's a good point. And I think and that's a good requirement of the law. They want to make sure that these these cases, that there's a reason to file them, that these are real cases. And obviously, any case that we file, is, we, we know is real and, and has uh, significance. And so we, 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 we reach out to experts, other physicians or other healthcare providers who, are, who have reviewed all the records and looked at it. And they, they testify about what's the standard of care. What is a reasonable doctor or healthcare providers supposed to have done under the circumstances. Uh, and they will have had a, an extensive review of the records to have done that. And we do a lot of vetting of, of these cases. Zach is often involved in the vetting of these cases where we're looking through records and interviewing witnesses. Uh, but particularly in the medical malpractice cases, we do a significant amount of vetting. We start with the records, but then we always go back to an expert and experts are critical. Uh, Two of the folks who, Carol Ching has made an appearance on the webisode. She's really has lots of relationships with experts that we have used. Carol's very good with the medical terminology and with the records. There's another person who's, uh, I know, going to be making an appearance here shortly on these webisodes, and that's Amy Guthrie. She's very good at looking through medical records. In fact, I haven't had a chance to talk to her this morning, but I understand that she'd reached out to you, Zach, once again, wanting to be on the webisodes to talk about she medical did. records, you know, and so maybe we can loop her in next week. I haven't had a chance to do that. If I probably have had a chance to have seen her this morning, uh, we would have looped her in this week because I know she's anxious. She's spoken to you several times. Very much so. We would have tried at least. I don't know if we would have succeeded. Well, <laughs> yeah. going back to what you were talking about, John, you actually brought up a, a good point and you, you both of you kept saying experts. And I want to go back to the term expert specifically for our viewers and break it down. Exactly what is an expert? And, and let's expand on that. Are we just talking about a doctor? I mean, are there different types of experts that we, we retain and vet and that sort of thing? It's a great question, Zach. So if it's a medical malpractice case and, and let's say an orthopedic surgeon did something that was negligent, we would get another orthopedic surgeon who would be the expert okay. in that case. It would be the identical doctor who does that work and who does that work regularly, who could say after reviewing the records and looking at everything that happened based on 
his or her expert's opinion that what that doctor did in that circumstance did violate the standard of care. So in the medical malpractice case, that's an excellent question. It, it needs to be the, the physician or maybe a nurse practitioner or a nurse who does the identical work that the, that the person did in this case, who could say based on my experience and based on my review of the work, of the work that was done here, it was not done in the right way. And okay. so, and so, uh, and that's what they're brought in to testify. Now, in other cases, we do have other experts. You know, we have economic experts who would talk about lost income and, and damages to an individual uh, and, and folks who would maybe look at a particular product or uh, look at something and say it violated the standard of care. But those experts, and that's the word that judges use to describe what they are, but it's really somebody who does that same work, whatever that work is. In the medical malpractice case, it's a healthcare provider. Okay, excellent. Thank you for that, John. Well, Daniel, do you have anything else to add? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Do you have any questions for me? <laughs> all right. Well, again, we thank you all for joining us on this week's webisode, and we hope you guys have a great weekend, and we will definitely see you next week. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you all. Bye-bye.